Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Chuck Pfeffer, Director of Product Management for Factory Metrology at Faro Technologies. And today I'm going to be introducing our newest product at Faro, our new laser tracker platform, the Vantage S and Vantage E laser trackers. Um, here's an agenda. We're going to be spending probably about 40, 45 minutes to get through um, before we get to the questions. Um, first, we're going to have a brief introduction of Faro. Um, and then we're going to get into tracker basics. So um, if any of you are new um, to laser tracker, laser tracker technology, we'll explain a little bit about what a tracker is and how it works. And then we'll get into the meat of our presentation today, which is to talk about the features and benefits of the new Vantage S and Vantage E trackers. Um, we'll also cover the software that Faro has to offer to support the trackers. Um, and then we'll have a demo, um, and that's the video portion where we'll show how these new remote controls and gestures work, um, which are some of the, the key features um, to the new trackers. Uh, and then we'll finish up after the demo uh, by going over some uh, applications for the laser tracker. And finally, uh, the questions and answer session, um, which you can uh, submit through the chat. So Faro Technologies is the world's most trusted source for 3D measurement, imaging, and realization solutions for factory metrology, product design, construction, BIM, SIM, public safety, forensics, and 3D solutions applications. You can see a wide variety of applications that are covered. Um, I'm the director of product management for factory metrology. Today, we'll be focusing on the tracker applications in factory metrology. Faro is a global network, um, a huge footprint around the world. We have over 1,400 employees. Um, I'm uh, talking to you today from our Exton, Pennsylvania facility, um, where we have engineering, production, service, and admin support. We also do training here. Um, our worldwide headquarters um, is in Lake Mary, Florida. Um, we have European headquarters in Stuttgart, Germany, and uh, Asia headquarters in Singapore. And you can see um, from the yellow dots that we have uh, service and sales centers all over the globe. Solutions that we offer. Um, mostly, you can see our portable solutions, um, but I'll go through some details on them. Uh, these are measurement solutions, um, in many cases, that are enabling the user to move upstream and move the inspection process uh, up along uh, into the production processes, and, and even in many cases, uh, uh, they're used to actually work with the production process to improve the production process as it moves upstream. Um, so no longer you have are the days where you um, have a part that comes out the end and gets checked in a lab. Now these devices are all out in the shop, um, improving the processes um, and reducing scrap and rework by uh, by moving them upstream. Uh, the first uh, product on this page here is the Ferro Arm and Scan Arm. So you have a flexible device that can be um, moved to where your parts are and um, able to measure them uh, with up to a 12 foot reach. Then we have the laser tracker, which is what we're going to be focusing on today, which is effectively also a portable CMM like the arm, but instead of being attached um, by a mechanical device, the probe is attached by a laser and the range is up to 80 meters. Then we go to the hundreds of meters where we look at the laser scanner. Um, now we're talking um, more like two millimeter accuracy, but you're able to measure buildings and bridges and boats and piping and process plants. Um, so the laser scanner. Uh, captures uh, hundreds of millions of points um, to map out entire uh, buildings and, uh, and structures. Something new for Faro is our laser projection technology. Um, last year, we acquired business to, uh, to allow us to offer now laser projection products like the Tracer M shown there. That's a projector that can be used for layout, um, for, for uh, assembly guidance effectively taking uh, parts and putting them onto larger assemblies and, and, and it directs you by putting the laser directly where you need to put the part in the shape of the part. So the part effectively fits right into the laser footprint. Um, it also can be used for paint layout, um, anything that requires to show a user where to put things in an assembly process. It also can be used to validate the assembly process because then it can project back and show if everything's in the right place. We also, from that product line, have an early adopter product um, which is our imaging laser radar. So it not only does the laser projection, but it also does laser scanning. And so that enables it to scan in a 50 foot volume to get a complete scan or a detailed scan of details within that volume. 
We have a handheld scanner. This is our freestyle scanner. Um, it's used mainly to supplement the laser scanner up above. So when you measure uh, large buildings or large structures um, that you're scanning with millions of points, because there's a, the scanner um, scans from a specific location, it, it gets a spherical scan of data. But anything that's hidden behind or underneath something is missing from that scan because there's not a line of sight. So this handheld scanner allows you to fill in all the gaps of those laser scans. Um, it has about a millimeter accuracy, so it can be used for really any handheld scanning that would uh, work with that accuracy level. And then we have the 3D imager, the Cobalt 3D imager, um, also deployed as an imager array, can measure um, a half meter volume with five or nine million points in a shot. So it's a, it's a point cloud generation type device. Um, and in an array, it could measure much larger areas configured in two, three, or up, you know, actually an unlimited number of cobalts can be put together uh, to collect data. And it could be deployed um, in an automated fashion, so it could be in line or near line for inspection processes. Um, we also have software that supports all these products, the quality control and inspection by our CAM2 measure and our Build It software. And then we also have software offerings for our BIM SIM markets, which are construction and crash and fire, and also um, extensive point cloud registration and management systems for our laser scanner. So overall, a broad, innovative portfolio of 3D measurement, imaging hardware, and software from Faro. So now we get into uh, the basics of what we're gonna talk about today, the laser tracker. Um, so if you're brand new to the tracker, I'm gonna just spend a couple minutes talking about what a tracker is and how it works. First off, it's a portable long range contact coordinate measurement system. So sometimes people look at a tracker and they see the laser and they don't realize it's actually a high accuracy contact measurement device. The contact measurement is actually still giving us the highest possible accuracy um, in a measurement system, it, though we offer many different types of scanners. So you'll get the best accuracy using these, uh, these retrospheres that you see here. So the retrospheres are effectively, they, we call them spherically mounted retroreflectors. Those are SMRs, and those are the probes that you use to touch the part that you measure. And the trackers used to accurately align, inspect, digitize, um, and set up parts and machinery. And we'll show some applications at the end of how it actually does that. The next slide, I'm gonna show you a little bit more about how the tracker actually works. So the tracker sends out a laser beam to this retroreflector up to 80 meters away, and then the, the, the light comes back to the tracker. And what the tracker needs to do is to see the return beam, and it tries to follow it to the center. So the beam goes out, hits the target, comes back, and then the tracker drives to the center of the beam. So effectively, it's always tracking the center of the spherically mounted retroreflector, the SMR. So as the tracker is targeting the SMR, whether the SMR is moving or stable, it's constantly reporting the two angles that it reads to point at the SMR, an uh, elevation angle and an azimuth angle. And so now it's got two angles. It knows in 2D space what angle it's pointing at. And then to get a 3D, you add a distance. And so it has a highly accurate absolute distance meter. And that um, I have a slide on that coming up, but that gives you that third piece of information that you need to get the two angles and a distance, and we report that typically in the software as a Cartesian coordinate as an X, Y, Z. So the absolute distance meter, which gives us our distance measurement, uses a phase shift technology. So within the tracker, it splits that laser and it keeps one as a reference, and then it compares the return beam, which has made the trip out to the target and back, and it can compare the phase shift between those two beams to tell you how far away the target is. And actually, it's able to define that distance with a resolution of half, uh, half a micron. So you can, deter, you can actually see movement of the target at that uh, resolution um, in the inline measurement. And then that measurement is then you know, combined with the two angles a thousand times a second to give you your thousand times a second data rate of XYZ coordinates. The, the method that we use today and actually previous methods that Faro has used are patented methods um, uh, of phase shift technology, very high speed. Um, it actually is much higher speed than even the thousand times a second, and we do averaging to get us that that really tight resolution um, at a thousand times a second. Of course, the advantage of absolute distance is that you don't need to reset it to a known location. You know, at the beginning of of laser trackers, in fact, the first laser trackers were called laser tracking interferometers. Um, 
they had to rely on, on an interfer interferometric device that required a reset every time it was used. And it, if it was ever interrupted, it would have to be reset. So ADM has come a long way since then. The original ADM systems used to reset the interferometers, but the Faro ADMs <clears throat> in the last several years, in fact, probably the last decade, have had high-speed ADM that allows them to measure continuously, beam interrupted immediately, they have the data again. So um, they're actually reporting ADM readings at 1,000 per second. And so that's, that's the basics of laser trackers. Now we're going to focus on the new laser trackers that we released last month, the Vantage S and the Vantage E. Um, it's a product family. It sets a new standard in price and performance um, and is addressing those challenges that we have in the large-scale measurement applications. Um, we've added remote controls workflow, which are some ease of use workflow enhancements that really improve the productivity of the users with these trackers. Superior accuracy, exceptional portability, um, ruggedness, all things that we're going to highlight in this presentation to understand the new value and the amazing uh, performance of these new trackers. So we're going to get into the features and benefits here. So we have two models available, the Vantage S and the Vantage E. These both share high accuracy. They both have the capability with the mobile device control that we'll talk about, um, both exceptionally portable and rugged. The, the, differ, the, key, the only difference, I should say, between these two models in their performance is the range that they can measure. So the, uh, the Vantage S is an 80 meter range tracker, so it's zero to 80 meters. And then the, the, other, the other Vantage E is zero to 25 meters. There's been some questions. Sometimes people look at the tech sheet. There is a test that tests the accuracy of the tracker at different ranges. And one of the tests is, uh, is two to five meters. And that's not, that doesn't mean it doesn't measure shorter than two meters. It just means that that's a standardized test. So both of them have complete range from zero to 25 and zero to 80 meters. The overview of the enhancements here, and we'll get into detail of many of these, um, I'll go through quickly. The remote controls, this is a brand new interface that gives you access to the tracker from a mobile device. The key element here is that it's a direct connection to the tracker. So it works even before you set up a PC, you can begin managing your tracker through this app. Portability, you see the tracker that's shown here in this picture. Um, there is no external controller. It's not hidden from the picture. This tracker um, no longer has any controller to run. Um, it also runs on batteries, uh, which gives you up to eight hours per battery set, and they're hot swappable, so you never run out of battery as long as you're charging offline. It has a single beam ADM system. We'll get into the details of that, but this really revolutionized how trackers work, and it's a class one iSafe laser as well. It has an improved data rate. I mentioned 1,000 points per second. That's been the internal data rate of the tracker, but today this tracker can, can actually transmit 1,000 points per second to the PC, so you can do these high, high dynamic speed measurements continuously now. Um, it has upgraded cameras uh, with a wider field of view. It has improved Wi-Fi, and um, it also works uh, with within uh, and with the firewall turned on, which um, had been issues previously with certain security areas. So remote controls, you see here um, uh, some pictures of the interface. It's a mobile device uh, app. It runs on the Android platform. And here you see, you can actually see live video feed and uh, it has target finding, which shows you the targets in color on the screen. And you can simply click with your finger on the screen to drive to the target and lock onto it. It also gives you full control of the tracker. So you can move through the device. You can swipe up, down, left, right, and move around, look up, look down, move the tracker to where you want it to be pointing. And because it's a 50 degree field of view, it, it doesn't take long before you get within what you're looking for within the field of view. It also has capability to run different workflows. So you see here some, the, the interface is showing an initialize button, a home button. Um, it has remote accuracy checks built into it, quick and custom compensations. So you can do a lot to manage your tracker before you're even set up on your PC. So a lot of advantage there with this direct connection to the tracker. Part of the remote controls capability also is including the gestures. 
And so uh, the gestures allow you to quickly reacquire the target. So as long as the target's within the 50 degree field of view, um, you just do a simple gesture and the tracker drives to your target and locks on and you're ready to go. So you're able to easily move within the volume that you're working without worrying about tracking the beam along with you. Um, you just need to look back at the tracker and wave and it comes to get you. Um, and this now works in any lighting condition. So it'll work in bright sunlight or in dark conditions as well. The battery power, this is an all new feature for the tracker. Um, there's an external battery pack. Um, you see here, it's, it has a hook mount, so it allows it to be hung uh, from the portable stand. Um, it runs on uh, military grade lithium ion batteries. There's a charge level indicator, so you can keep track. The, the set of two batteries that are in there that are shown here um, have a combined eight hour battery life and then you can have batteries charging offline and with the hot swappable feature you never need to run out of batteries um, you can just continually work without being plugged into the wall um, with the enhanced wi-fi you can also have a completely wireless connection to the tracker and power so it can move around the part or the job site um, without any wires in the way and they're faa compliant so as long as you're following the regulations the batteries um, meet the requirements uh, for shipment the integrated ADM, the IADM, which is a patent pending technology that's released in this tracker, um, is a significant part of what makes this tracker great. Um, it really enables it to be the most stable, fully functional tracker that's ever been built. What it is, is instead of having two beams as traditional trackers have had um, from the beginning of ADM, there's a, a typical, or the previous, even Faro trackers had a red beam, and an infrared ADM beam. And these two beams had to be aligned to each other so they would both make the 80 meter route to the uh, SMR and back. And when they return, you needed to have them aligned well enough that even though it was tracking the red beam, you had enough intensity on the infrared beam to get a good ADM reading. So Faro had to build these trackers um, stable enough that they could uh, hold up over time and temperature and shipments, and they did. Um, but that, that that's how they were able to measure the ADM. That whole requirement is gone from this tracker. The red beam goes out to the target, it comes back, it's tracked to the center of the SMR, and that's the same beam that you're using to measure your distance. So there's no more issue with any, any change in that alignment. There, that's not an issue for measuring accurate ADM. So it, all, it improves your, um, your stability of the system, your reliability of the system, it improves the tracking of the system, um, so this just makes it an overall outstanding performer um, by being able to rely on the one beam. You also have fewer parts and a, a simpler design. So um, this is really a revolutionary thing for the tracker. Um, also, the red beam happens to be a smaller diameter, um, so you get better performance on smaller targets. Plus, because you don't have the infrared beam, you're now just a class one laser, um, which is which is another advantage of the system. So. Um, huge benefit to the stability of the system and the performance of the system is this single beam red ADM. Additional features on the tracker, the high resolution stereo cameras. So you have a color view now to see the targets. It's easier to see them in the color view. Um, they're also called out on the screen with a special color. Um, the view went from 30 to 50 degrees. So now you can see significantly more when you're looking at the screen or you're looking at your app on the, on the, ta on the tablet or the phone. So you can easily see targets and lock onto them uh, with this camera. And it operates now in all lighting conditions, including outdoors. So you can work in bright sunshine. The system will find the targets um, in, in outdoor conditions. There's also within the target acquisition, there's a smart find function. So it will automatically lock on to the target that is closest to the center of the camera's view. And if there's a, only one target, it'll find that target and lock onto it on demand. Um, and then, of course, as I mentioned, the gestures, so simple gestures allow you to command the tracker to come to your target in the field of view. Um, the system has exceptional portability, the removal, uh, elimination of a master control unit, so you have a single unit um, that fits in a single box, continuous operation on the hot swappable batteries, and the wireless improvements allow you to, to work completely wireless. And, um, and it makes it just easy to move around the shop and even and move between plants and travel with as well. The new trackers, 
Uh, Van and Jess and Van G continue to support our Super 6 Degree of Freedom track arm solution, uh, integrated 3D measurement solution. The novel thing about the solution is that it completely eliminates the line of sight challenges. So the tracker can locate an arm or multiple arms within its 80 meter volume and put them to work immediately. So the arm catches the target, um, takes a few seconds, and then it can continue to measure within a 12 foot volume. We have the arm that has a, a 12 foot reach from end to end. Um, and all of that could be out of the line of sight of the tracker. So it, it, it expands, significantly expands the measurement range of the tracker and it maintains the tracker's accuracy because each time that you locate an arm, that's an independent measurement for the arm. Um, if you're just using an arm to move around, you're decreasing your accuracy once you move too far away from your origin. But with the tracker locating the arm, it's a continuous equal accuracy at each position. So you really have the benefit of the tracker's volumetric accuracy and combined with the benefit of the reach and the flexibility of the arm. Not to mention that um, the arm also deployed as a scan arm gives you the ability to scan um, within the tracker volume. So even though it's maybe in the tracker's line of sight, the scan arm gives you a large scale scanning with high accuracy. The versatility of this new tracker, um, the robust design <clears throat> based on rigorous testing that we did on the design, shock, vibration, uh, subjected to temperature extremes, humidity, and water resistance. Um, these tests, um, including the shock and the temperature, are done actually on all the units that we deliver, but the design was based on um, a full complement of these tests. It has versatile mounting. Um, it supports a variety of stands, tall stands, lightweight stands, can be mounted vertically, horizontally, upside down, um, and also in an angle mount. <clears throat> and can be used on dynamic high-speed measurement now, where you'll get 1,000 measurements per second um, that will be all data coming out of the system, not just subsampling. So now you can do high-speed measurement for long periods of time, collect um, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of points with that data rate. Reliability built into the system. I mentioned the single beam integrated ADM, which eliminates the multiple beam alignment in the system, gives you incredible reliability, not just longevity, but also stability of the accuracy because the drift is reduced in the system because you just have one beam aligned. It continues to be IP52 as previous ferro trackers. And as I mentioned, the stress testing um, included international standal standards on shock and vibration, um, extreme temperature cycling, which we actually include uh, with every unit that we build, um, humidity testing, and the design went through life testing as well, which pushes it to the, to the far limits of what it can do. Um, improvements in the network, the Wi-Fi and the LAN. Um, the tracker actually works as a DHCP server now. Um, and I mentioned the, the tablet connecting to it. It can actually connect directly to the tablet. It can connect also directly to the laptop. And it can do both of those simultaneously. So it can support that direct connection to give a live wireless uh, video feed to the handheld and at the same time send measurements to the laptop. And it's running on the uh, 802.11n, uh, which is the higher speed, long range system. As I mentioned before, it works with the Windows firewall enabled, which um, is required for many customers. And, um, and it also has an improved wired ethernet, which is gig E. Um, the wired ethernet is also IP rated. So it has IP52 all the way to the computer. And I should also mention here that the, the power cable that goes through the power supply um, that also uh, runs IP rated all the way to the wall socket. And now I remember what I didn't tell you about the battery, so I might as well mention it now. But um, many of our tracker customers previously used um, uninterruptible power supplies to both protect the unit from power surges and also to make it possible to move it short distances with it powered on. Well, the battery pack that now can hang from the lightweight stand um, can act as a UPS as well. So you can power it through um, that uh, battery pack. And if you need to move it, you can disconnect the power and move it, and it can run on battery for up to eight hours. So now you if you buy the battery pack, you would have no need for a UPS anymore. Mechanically, as I mentioned, there's no master control unit. Um, you can see it fits in this single small case, the power supply, the cables in our presentation to 
Europe earlier today. Somebody asked me if uh, the mandrel and the SMR were in that box. Yes, they are. Because we're pulling it out of the box, it's blocking that. But this also holds the mandrel and the SMR case in there as well. So you pretty much have everything you need to, to run the tracker in that box. Um, the tracker has two handles, so it's easy to take out of the box and mount. It has a stable operation uh, on a variety of stands, including lightweight stands and tall stands. And um, the heavy-duty construction is a result of our, our testing to ensure that um, we met the standards of what trackers go through, both in use and in shipping. And uh, finally, we added a shock absorber, which you can see um, in the bottom right. There's an area on the tracker, this, this, this metal ring here, that mates with the mandrel on the instrument stand. And when you go to mount a tracker, you're holding it with, with the handles and you rest it on top of the mandrel. And then you typically slide it around until you find the centering and then it drops down. Well, that's a one inch drop of metal on metal. And that actually can generate quite a bit of G's. We've always tested our tracker to survive that, but now we've completely eliminated that drop. So when you put the tracker on the stand, once it finds the center, it just slowly drops on its own until it has a face-to-face -face interface with the steel, and then you can lock it in. So you know this is a, a very nice uh, uh, advantage. So you don't have to worry about um, carefully mounting your tracker anymore. No more shock on the uh, on the mount. Now we'll talk a little bit about the software that's available with the tracker from Faro. We offer Cam2 Measure 10 software. This is a complete 3D measurement software, covers all of our metrology products. Um, it's ideal for all types of measurement, including whether you have CAD. Um, if you don't have CAD, you can build coordinate systems and inspect uh, features to datum features easily. Um, it has geometric dimensioning and tolerancing built in. Um, so you can report um, in the standard GD&T formats. It features include multiple hardware devices. So you can run uh, with one tracker. You can run with more than one tracker. You can run with a tracker and an arm or up to four arms. Um, if, you, uh, if you look at our website, we have a video when we released CAM2 a couple of years ago. One of the, I think it was 10.5, highlighted the fact that you could measure a car with four arms, actually scan a car with four ferro arms Faro scan arms simultaneously, and they were all located by a tracker. So you had five devices, uh, five devices in that setup scanning a car simultaneously. It has the watch windows that you need for the tool building. Um, it has immediate measurement modes where you can program it to take measurements of certain uh, conditions. It does have its own app, actually, Cam2 Remote, which is an iOS app that can run uh, the uh, functions of Cam2, uh, which is very helpful for a tracker. Um, it has a great super six off track arm interface to make it very fast and easy to locate the arm within the tracker's coordinate system. It has also very easy to use automatic device relocation wizard. That's basically the, the workflow that you use to move the tracker around a measurement job. Um, makes it very easy and, uh, and, and uh, so you don't make blunders in that where, you know, sometimes if you, you measure the wrong point when you're relocating the tracker, you have to figure it out. All that is simplified for the user with the automatic device relocation. And you know, supports uh, inspections uh, with or without CAD, tool building, um, tool certification, and troubleshooting on the shop floor um, to go see you know, why a part isn't, isn't coming out right and go uh, measure the tooling, um, whatever it takes. It's very flexible software. And then we have Build-It software. Last year, um, we Faro acquired Build-It. Um, Build-It software was um, basically uh, built on um, aerospace tracker applications. So the original input that created this product was targeting the tracker functionality. And so it's grown from there to become a very robust um, interface with best in class features for large scale metrology. So I'd say the CAM2 solution is our great solution for the customers that are using either a lot of different products or they have um, more simple workflows or they're running you know, more basic projects. Um, for the advanced uh, implementations, the advanced projects, special uh, products that, projects that require re repetition with a lot of complexity, we would recommend build it. So, I mean, it has, a, it has device bundling, which is certainly a high-end feature of bringing many tracker stations together. 
Um, it, it gives a real-time visual feedback, um, which is great when you're monitoring um, something that you're being, uh, that's being assembled or you need to see deviations live on the screen um, as you inspect a part. Really, I think the thing that it shines most, which is partly why it's called Build It, are the build tools. So it has great graphical and easy to understand feedback for um, doing real-time adjustments. So that's telling you you're trying to move something into position and it's telling you which direction to move it and telling you when it's in the right place. Also alignment tools, it also has GD&T support and it supports uh, native CADs. Um, it also now has large point cloud processing, so it works with all the Faro scanners also. So if you're doing a track arm and you want to scan, um, build it supports that. Um, it supports all the Faro trackers, so not just this new tracker, but all the trackers Faro has ever made. Um, it also supports other third-party devices. So if you have other equipment, build it can support that as well. And I mentioned you know, automation and repetition. It's highly configurable. Um, it has a complete macro language. So really, the sky's the limit on what you want it to do. Even, even reducing the data can be done in the macros. So it can do um, customized reporting, uh, customized workflows. And so this is the type of product where you could have an engineer design the workflow and have an operator run it. So now we're going to take a moment to do a quick demo of the remote controls and the gestures. The demo's a few minutes long. Um, it's possible that if you don't have the right plugin, it might not show for you. If that's the case, you just wait a few minutes and I'll be back after the video. So I'm gonna hand it over. Let's see, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Will. Uh, we had uh, uh, Will in our video studio prepare this video to run and um, it'll be just about four minutes and then we'll continue after this. We'll get into tracker applications. Hi. I'm Will Pitorello, Application Specialist here with Ferro Technologies, and today I'm going to demonstrate the remote controls and gesture features on the Vantage S and Vantage E laser trackers. First, let's talk about remote controls. Ferro's patent pending remote controls feature is a mobile application that allows you to control the movements and other functions of the Vantage S or Vantage E with a mobile phone or tablet. When using remote controls workflow, your mobile device is able to show a laser tracker camera's eye view of exactly what the laser tracker's stereo cameras are seeing. It is a live video feed. You can use your finger to swipe across the screen of the mobile device and guide the movement of the tracker accordingly. Once a target or SMR comes into view on your mobile screen, you can press and hold your finger on the image of the target and the tracker will aim at the target and lock on. You can use this procedure to make the Vantage S or Vantage E lock on to any target that is in the camera's 50 degree field of view. Remote Control's workflow also allows you to perform the most important functions of the Vantage S or Vantage E from your mobile device. For example, connecting to Ferro's Chem2 software to control the Chem2 workflows, performing measurements, turning tracker functions such as gestures on or off, compensations and accuracy checks. Now, I want to show you our gestures feature. With the new Vantage S or Vantage E, it's really easy to locate and capture the laser beam. To simplify the workflow, the user can break the beam in the direction of where he or she is going, walk to the eventual location of the measurement and reacquire the beam quickly through a simple gesture. This process is fast and effective, especially if there are a lot of obstacles or if the user has to move to locations that are difficult to reach, such as climbing up a ladder or a scaffold. The simplicity of the gestures means that the user does not need to be highly trained to track an SMR. Without gestures, the user must be skilled to walk with the SMR while holding it oriented correctly towards the tracker. From anywhere within the tracker camera's 50 degree field of view, you can use simple gestures to locate the beam. Simply gesture with the SMR in your hand. Once the tracker recognizes the gesture, blue lights on the tracker will start to blink. Hold the SMR still, amber lights will light up on the tracker indicating that the tracker is locking onto the target. Green lights will light up once the Vantage has locked onto the target. You may now begin measuring. The gestures capability 
allows our patented Super 6 Doth track arm solution to be easier to use than ever before. Watch this. I have now captured the beam and the Vintage S has identified the location of the scan arm in the coordinate system. We hope you have enjoyed learning about Pharaoh's remote controls, workflow, and gestures. And now, back to the presentation. Well, thank you to Will for that presentation on the remote controls and gestures. Hope that now is clear. I think um, good to see, see it live to understand how that works. Um, we're going to move on to applications now. Um, where you can see how the benefits of the new tracker will help uh, with what the, what you, the customers need to do <laughs> to, to get your work done with the tracker. Um, first application we're highlighting here is inspection. So the tracker is an excellent tool for measuring large parts and assemblies wherever they need to be measured. Um, so uh, you see it's easy to measure, get to the datum features by moving the tracker around the workspace. Um, and so the features like the remote controls um, give you the ability to easily uh, move around the workspace without having to track the target. Just get to where you need and make your measurements. The trackers accurately complete these in-process inspections and also final inspections. So whether it's it's at the supplier or um, prior to shipment to a customer or a customer doing an incoming inspection of a large part, um, those are critical inspections for these typically high-value large parts that need to be accurately measured. Um, so Tracker gives a high degree of flexibility with its inspection capability. For installations, these are where you have large parts that need to typically be shipped and then installed into larger systems. And um, so you have the need to inspect them oftentimes at the supplier to make sure they're going to fit before they're shipped. Um, and then you also have the mating area where they're going to be delivered and installed often needs to be measured to make sure they're going to fit before the shipment goes. Uh, and of course, um, once the, the part is on site and ready for installation, um, the tracker is then used to align it into the proper position to get the installation correct. Um, we had a video done um, many years ago, shown on the History Channel, and uh, it was for an arresting gear engine which was installed on an aircraft carrier. And so they had, in the aircraft carrier, they measured the pads which were going to receive this engine. And then at the, at the fab shop, they measured the actual engine itself. And they were able to then go and pre-shim pre all of the pads. So when the engine came, it was able to be installed perfectly without uh, modification. So there's a lot of ways that um, the tracker can be used for ins installation both from preparation to alignment during the process. Um, and another alignment type application for the tracker is when you need to take a piece of machinery and fine tune it so it runs more efficiently and in many cases at a higher speed. So on the left, you see a roll mill where um, you can align the cylinders um, to a datum cylinder or a primary cylinder. And so you can take inspection data to the cylinder as it, as it is and then make adjustments and remeasure it to bring it into the highest performance uh, uh, condition. Um, so alignment um, not only uh, can be used to repair and fix, uh, but it can be used to take a machine that's running and make it run at a higher rate. Tool building is really the bread and butter of the laser tracker. Um, tool building means that you're building an assembly fixture, and these fixtures um, have a couple different levels of, of fabrication where you build um, the weldments up and then you put details on these fixtures so when the parts come into the fixtures they sit in the right positions so they can be assembled and so um, the tracker is really an amazing tool which provides real-time feedback of the position of these details to allow you to move them into a very uh, high accurate position and then fix them and then come back and certify them again to say that yes they're in the right position then the tool can be used. Um, one of the advantages of tool building with a tracker is the tools can be built right there in the production line where they're going to be used. So you know the days of having to send a tool to a CMM lab 
to be um, measured and assembled are gone. Now the tracker is on the shop floor, building the tools right where they're going to be used. Um, so you have improved speed and accuracy in the builds and the verifications. You can also continually go out and measure the tool for wear over time. You can also go out and measure the tool to troubleshoot it if the parts that are coming out of the tool aren't right. So um, tool building is really um, a huge, uh, a huge application for laser tracker. Robot calibration, another great application for the laser tracker. Um, and now actually with the with the new tracker, you can track and uh, measure the motion of a robot at a thousand samples per second. You can actually measure it a thousand points per second out of the tracker. Um, so it can be used to calibrate the the motion of the robot. Um, robots are very repeatable, but they're not necessarily very accurate. And so with tracker data um, being used to calibrate the robot, that data can then be um, used to put into the model of the robot, and you can improve the accuracy of the robot by orders of magnitude um, by running uh, tracker uh, positional calibration of the robot in its, in its uh, working environment. So it can do the calibration, which allows the robot then to go work more accurately on its own. But there are also many applications where the tracker does a real-time monitoring of the robot. And we've done that um, with Faro trackers for uh, riveting operations and for drilling operations, where um, they actually are tracking the robot during those operations to effectively do a metrology-guided drilling or riveting. So our last application that I'm highlighting here is metrology-guided assembly. And so I showed you the, the, the tool building application earlier, um, especially in aerospace, the tools that were put together to build the, the large aircraft are these enormous multi-million dollar fixtures um, that are put together with laser trackers. The issue with these fixtures are they need to be um, continually checked and they need to um, be changed if there's a design change. So all that, um, becomes very expensive. The metrology guide assembly allows for what they call flexible tooling, which means that now the tooling doesn't have to be built accurately. It just needs to have the functionality to move the parts into position. And they rely on the trackers for the metrology guidance. So in this case, to, to, to attach a wing to a fuselage or to, to join a fuselage together, they outfit the, the tooling and the parts with SMRs. And now the tracker points around the, the, the uh, assembly area, and then reports back the position of the parts uh, to a controller, which then drives the parts into position. And so through the, the uh, iterative measurement of the assembly, the tracker effectively is driving the assembly process. And this has been done um, for many years now, and it continues to be adopted on more and more programs. Um, I was involved with one of the early ones that we did with Faro um, for the Airbus A380, I guess it was in 2003, um, where they put, I think, seven trackers with uh, hundred, hundreds of targets in the, in the automated tooling that, that built that fuselage. So, um, and that's been adopted now. So this is, a, this is a, um, a great application for the new tracker, which now you know, doesn't require a controller, so it's easier to install it in an automated setup. There's less parts to install. And also for the initial setup, it's easy to, to swipe around a tracker to point it around where you need it to go from the, uh, from the remote device, especially when these trackers are um, put into remote areas. They're not necessarily accessible to a person, but they don't need to be because they're easily accessible from the remote app. So those are some common applications for the tracker. In summary here, I'll just remind everyone of these great features. Um, the usability dramatically improved, uh, especially through the remote controls, covers the, uh, the remote device and, and the gestures, improved portability with the hot swappable batteries, um, no controller, um, the single case transportation, really the elimination of that UPS, I said, if you, if you use this new battery, um, and the reliability with the single beam uh, integrated ADM and the extreme stress testing that this model went through really makes it um, a best in class in the price performance uh, for the product. So. Just want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, thanks to Will for putting that video together. And we're going to go and um, open it up to the questions which we've been taking on the, uh, on the chat that we have online. And I'm going to, um, let's see here.
just remind you that that's uh, on the uh, right side of the screen there. The moderator chat is the one that you want to use um, to submit a question. And also, before I get into the questions, I'll just also note that um, what you saw today is really just a very quick high level overview of the product. And I'm sure um, maybe even in addition to what um, you can chat in the questions, um, you, if you feel you benefit from learning more, you can get a personal web demo at the Faro Demo Studios. Um, you saw, actually, we used that studio um, as part of that video, but um, we have the capability to demonstrate any of our products. Um, if you're interested in seeing the Vantage S, um, we could give you a demo on that. But of course, any product is available for demo at the web studio. Just You, you can uh, set up just a 15-minute demo an easy way for you to see a product in more depth and it's personal so you can get exactly what you need to know out of that in a one-on-one -on -one interaction with Faro. so i just uh, let you know about that i'll leave that up on the screen and i'm going to take a look at um, questions that we have coming in here okay somebody asked how long is the average warm-up time well warm-up time will depend i guess also on um, whether or not the instrument's soaked in the environment and what the temperature of the environment is but i'd say um, this a warm up time is slightly better than previous ferro trackers, um, but I'd say it's probably till you get all the way up on a flat curve, uh, about 40 minutes is the warm up time. Question Does the remote control work on Apple devices? The, um, the remote controls that I showed um, only works on Android today. So um, for now, that's, that's the platform it runs on. I can tell you that the, it includes the device comes with every tracker. Um, so, you know, if you have an iPhone, you won't have to use your phone. You can just use the device um, that's, that comes with the tracker. Um, I did show the CAM2 measure um, uh, in a bullet on the description of CAM2 measure, and that does support an iPhone app. That's a different app, and that connects only to the PC with CAM2. Um, but the app I showed in the remote controls is just on the Android. Um, another question, I guess this is about the remote controls. It says, is it possible to perform a full calibration of the instrument in the field? If that's about the remote controls, um, the remote controls supports interim tests and it supports a custom compensation, which is, I think, what you mean by calibration. Um, it doesn't do all the different things that are in our full suite of compensation software called Compit, but it does do a subset of that. And um, typically, the um, the custom uh, compensation is easiest to do um, because it just lets you choose whatever points you can get to um, to create that compensation. Um, if you're talking about um, a full B89 calibration of the instrument, um, that's a pretty extensive test, and we offer that um, as as a you can buy a, a full B89 compensation for your tracker at Faro. Um, I don't know if that question is about that, but that's a pretty extensive test of measuring hundreds of of length measurements that need to be traceable. So uh, hopefully that just was talking about the app. Question about the accuracy, asking about how much more accurate are the new Angular encoders. Um, I, didn't, I didn't actually talk about any details about the Angular encoders. Um, the accuracy of the tracker is rated the same as the previous tracker. But as I mentioned when I talked about the, um, the integrated ADM, um, the design of this tracker uh, makes it a much more stable tracker than any tracker before. So you would expect that you would meet that accuracy, you know, over a wider range of temperature and over um, more severe conditions. So um, you get the same high accuracy that was offered, but with more stability and, and range of, uh, of operation. There's another question. It's about the response time of the air sensors um, and the workpiece temp sensor. I'm sorry, I, I don't know the... Um, the answer to that one off the top of my head, but we will answer all these questions uh, in a follow-up. Um, I can tell you, I know that the internal system samples a thousand samples per second, but I don't know if it ta if, has, if it's reading the, um, the temp sensor in every one of those samples. Yeah, so there's a question about the internal level. Um, this, uh, this tracker does have the same uh, level capabilities that we had before. Um, I think our accuracy is plus or minus two arc seconds on the level, and um, to, it's pretty easy to use. You don't have to have it perfectly level to use it. So there's a um, there's a, a tracker pad application you bring up. It shows you a bubble level 
and this is actually on your PC screen. It shows you a bubble level. Uh, it's very easy. The tracker needs to be within a, a degree or something, but you can really see it by your eye. Just get the tracker roughly level. And then you run the level, and it generates a, a level plane um, in your coordinate in your software, and you can use that to build your coordinate system. And then you can level everything within the view of the tracker. So um, yes, it has a has a, the same functionality as previously uh, previous models. The current version of CAM2, the question is, does it um, allow you to load heavy CAD files uh, like IGES files? And yes, absolutely. It can load um, large CAD files, and it does actually a very good job. Um, it, it, can, it, it, does a, um, it does a digestion of the CAD when it comes in, and it, it allows it to, to respond very well on the screen, although the full accuracy of the CAD is still in the software. There's a question about using the gestures. Why do you need to use um, gesture visibility uh, when the target usually is in the same field of view? Well, I'd say um, you know if you're walking around a part, 50 degrees could be um, a pretty wide view to go from one side of the part to the other. It effectively allows you just to, um, especially in a tool building or an operation where you're doing more than just measuring, it allows you to easily move around or put the SMR down and pick it back up. So it just it just keeps you from having to look for the target. And I'd say especially if you work outdoors, now that it has excellent outdoor capability, um, it's really near impossible to find the beam outdoors and manually catch the beam. So the gestures just make that possible. Um, somebody asked a general question about a tracker is what can impact accuracy when setting up the tracker? I mean, with all portable devices, the stability of your setup is most important. So I, I can't stress that enough is that you must make sure the tracker is mounted, the tracker stand is on a stable ground. You're not straddling two different pieces of concrete. Anything that could create any angular change in that tracker setup could uh, could um, impact the, the, uh, the stability and thus the accuracy of the tracker. Um, so I think, you know, the tracker, um, is inherently extremely accurate. So most of what you're doing is managing your environment. Um, you also should make sure that you have reference targets in your in your uh, measurement volume, so you can check them periodically. Because if anything moves, that's when you lose the accuracy. Um, so, you know, that's in far the question saying what can impact accuracy on setting up the tracker. I'd say, you know, making sure everything's stable and keeping an eye on that stability throughout the measurement job. Okay, um, there's two questions here. One is about um do you have an example for use of an inspection of smaller parts like under a cubic foot um so if you have a part that's under a cubic foot um you know i i if you have a tracker you certainly can measure a part that small that's not a problem um oftentimes with small parts if there are details you may need to use um special tooling uh to measure it um we have i didn't go over tooling with the tracker today but um, there are target nests where the, the SMR sits inside of, of a pin, and the pin can be used to measure things. But for small parts, you know, typically, um, if you do a lot of small parts, you wouldn't be looking at a tracker. You'd be looking at an arm to do that measurement, I would say. And um, the same person asked a question about elaborating on the digitizing function. Um, yeah, that, that is just meaning um, basically just scanning a surface of, of a part. I think that was uh, was what that word means in that. So it's basically taking the the, the the physical and bring it into the digital world. So it's just a measurement. But many people use that when they're talking about reverse engineering. You may take the SMR and 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 take a scan across a surface back and forth, and collecting the the data on that surface would give you um, a, a a nice characterization characterization of that surface. So that would be a digitizing application. Uh, somebody else asked about inspecting small machine parts with this. Um, something that can be done, but um, as I mentioned before, um, you know, you might you might look at a smaller volume measurement system to cover small parts, unless um, you have a lot of large parts and a few small parts, in which case the tracker can measure small machine parts, um, typically with tooling. So yes, it could be bought for large fabrications and then for small machine parts. If you have lots of machine parts, um, you might consider a ferro arm for that solution. Okay, I'm just going to take a couple more questions because we're actually over time. Um, I see somebody also asked about the internal level, which I answered, asking about CAM2 measure 10. 
Um, yes, it supports multiple trackers um, and multiple arms. So yes, it supports multiple devices, which can be a mix of trackers and arms. And I think I got all the questions then. All right, and we're over time. So just again, want to thank everyone um, for your attendance today and um, and remind you again, if you're interested in a personal web demo, you can call us directly or you can go to the website and sign up for that. Um, you know, we, we provide 15 minute short um, demos um, that are fully interactive one on one. Um, we also um, have longer demos if you're interested in that as well. So um, thank you again um, for, uh, for coming to see the new tracker and we look forward to hearing from you.